You're watching Mad Boy Labs Electrostatic Discharge. We're going to use a Wims Turst machine to make some observations about the discharge of high voltage direct current and how it's affected by the physical configurations of spark gap terminals. For a more general video on the Wims Turst machine, check out Mad Boy Labs Wims Turst Electrostatic Generators. For this video, it's enough to say that the device produces a high voltage of direct current and it will power our look into electrostatic discharge. There are observable differences between the positive and negative terminals of a spark discharge powered by a direct current source, as can be seen in these time-lapse images. The discharge of the positive terminal is very focused and tends to branch out towards the negative as the spark gap is made longer. Even when the gap is small, the discharge of the positive is visibly brighter and more concentrated. By adding a small breakout ball to the positive terminal, longer sparks can be obtained, which again tend to branch out towards the negative. Reversing the polarity, we observe that the discharge ball does not produce the same effect on the negative terminal. Here's a video of the gap set at its limit, first with the ball at the positive. Most of the discharge fails to fully cross the gap, but it regularly discharges into the air branching out from the positive and it occasionally flashes over. Reversing the polarity, we no longer observe the regular crack and branching out at the positive and the gap is strained to fire at all. A similar phenomenon is observed when we change the negative terminal from a ball to a plate. At the increased limit of the gap, the positive discharge branches out from a point into a cloud at the negative and it may again crack over in a solid filament. By reversing the polarity, we again observe that the charges react differently to the alternate configurations of the terminals. Both polarities operate corona discharge pinwheel motors. The difference in discharge can be seen at the electrodes and on the acrylic disc of this basic Poggendorf motor. Not so visible in this version of Jeff Menko's Corona Motor from a 1971 edition of Popular Science. But it reappears on Mad Boy Labs Bipolar Pinwheel, an interesting device happened upon somewhere between Franklin's Bells and the Pinwheel Motor. Support Mad Boy Lab with your subscription and I will bring you more of my mad devices.